Alright everybody, welcome back. If you've been watching my videos, welcome back. And if you uh, haven't seen any, any of my videos yet, uh, welcome for the first time. Today we will be talking about the always exciting topic about E. coli subtypes. So there's going to be four main subtypes. So we're going to be talking about E. coli. E. coli bacteria. There's going to be four main subtypes uh, that we're going to cover today. And we'll talk about the differences between them. Uh, just the basics. Uh, I'm not going to go too in depth about them. I'm going to talk about what I think is important, what the take home that you should know, uh, kind of for any level, either college or graduate school uh, for E. coli, different subtypes. So, what are they? Well, we've got E T E C, we've got E H E C, we've got E I E C, we've got E P E C. So what are the differences, I and mean, why do we even care about these subtypes? Um, I'm going to cover each one of them. So now let's 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 first talk about E H E C. What is E H E C? Well, it stands for it simply stands for enterohemorrhagic E. coli. There we go. E H E C entero hemorrhagic hemorrhagic so when you think hemorrhage you're thinking bloody you're thinking bloody diarrhea and thus uh, some of the strains of E H E C the entero hemorrhagic E coli you're gonna see bloody diarrhea and when you say what are some of the subtypes of E H E C there's one in particular that is the most famous the most popular the always famous serotype. O one five seven H seven. So this is an O, not a zero. O one five seven H seven subtype. So, what is this part? This is going to be the uh, cell wall antigen type. So the O is going to be the cell wall, that's going to be antigen type 157. You've got H7. This is going to be your flagella subtype. So uh, you're going to have O157 H7. This is going to be the most famous, the most popular. Um, I would commit this one to memory. I would associate O157 H7 with enterohemorrhagic E. coli. So why do I say this? Well. It's because this one will give you the bloody diarrhea. It'll also give you a uh, Shigella-like toxin. So all EHEC organisms have a Shigella-like toxin. This is important because some other forms don't make toxin. However, EHEC does. And what this toxin will do is it will inactivate the 60S ribosome. So remember we have the different ribosome subtypes. We have a 30S, a 50S, we've got a 60S, and we've got a 40S. This is going to be the small subunit for uh, bacteria. This is going to be the large subunit for bacteria. This will be the large subunit for eukaryotic cells. This will be the small sub uh, subtype for ribosome subtype for uh, eukaryotic cells. So prokaryotes, eukaryotes, just remember that bacteria are the 50S and the 30S. So we're creating a toxin. So this bacteria, this E. coli bacteria, is making a toxin that inactivates a eukaryotic, so a human ribosome. Well, ribosomes are used to make proteins, so that's not good. That's where we get a Shigella-like toxin. Uh, let's see, what else can I throw in here with the limited space? Uh, it's transmitted via the fecal oral route. That makes sense. You eat something or you touch your mouth. Um, fecal oral route. Um, you also associate hemolytic uremic syndrome. Hemolytic uremic syndrome, HUS. And this is due to enhanced. cytokine release. 
So when you're thinking EHEC, you're thinking you could possibly get hemolytic uremic syndrome. And this is due to the cytokine release, which will lyse red blood cells, red blood cells. Uh, you also will see kidney failure. And you also may see thrombocytopenia. All one word, I just can't fit it all. So thrombocytopenia. Uh, if you have a patient that comes in with these symptoms, you need to think of hemolytic uremic syndrome on your list. And this hemolytic uremic syndrome is going to be caused by the EHEC bug. All right. Uh, another point is it creates a toxin and it's not going to penetrate the intestinal epithelium. So not penetrating. It will create a toxin, however the bug itself does not penetrate the intestinal epithelium. It instead creates a toxin. So that's important for EHEC. That's about all the room we have for that. So now let's move on to ETEC. Another really common one, uh, important, I'm kind of going in terms of importance in my mind at least, uh, we have the e HEC, really important, you've got that serotype, that really famous serotype, you're thinking bloody diarrhea, the hemorrhagic, EHEC gives you heck, you'll have a bloody diarrhea, you'll have a shigella-like toxin produced, uh, you'll inactivate a ribosome, that's its mechanism of action, you may get hemolytic uremic syndrome. However, for ETEC, this is going to be your enterotoxigenic E. coli. Enterotoxigenic E. coli. That's what ETEC stands for. I liked it. So H was hemorrhagic. It'll give you bloody heck. It'll give you heck. This one, the T for the toxigenic, I like to think of it as travelers. So when you say, I got traveler's diarrhea, it's because you got ETEC form of E. coli. You got the traveler's form, the T form. So how does this work? Well, you're going to increase the adenylate cyclase. You're going to increase adenylate cyclase. will give you increased cyclic AMP levels, increased CAMP levels. And what that'll do is you'll have increased secrete, oops, secrete. So you'll have increased uh, gastrointestinal secretions of chloride and water. Chloride and water. So you're going to have a really, you know, kind of mucousy, not, not too mucousy, but you'll have a really watery, massive diarrhea. Uh, no blood, however. It's not hemorrhagic. There will be another form that does have blood. However, uh, just, just know that bloody diarrhea, think EHEC. However, this one will give you the watery diarrhea uh, due to the increased adenylate cyclase mechanism. All right, what else can I talk to you about? Um, there is a toxin. So if you're thinking Shigella-like toxin, you're thinking EHEC. This one is just a toxin that's produced. Uh, mostly your small intestine will be involved, your SI, small intestine. Uh, it will adhere to intestine mucosa. Notice the word that I used, adhere, not invade, adhere. Uh, so it'll just adhere to the intestinal mucosa. It'll create a toxin. This toxin will increase your adenylate cyclase. That'll increase your chloride and water secretion. Uh, treated uh, just symptomatically, you need to rehydrate them, they'll get better eventually. Next we've got a different form. We've got E, I, E, C. So this one's going to stand for entero, entero invasive E. coli. So remember the terminology before. ETEC adhered. This one is going to be invasive. It's going to invade. So, invade epithelium. 
I don't know why it's in quotes, because it actually does invade the epithelium. Uh, here, we're going to have large intestine involvement. And what we're going to do is, instead of having a toxin produced, it's going to be the actual bug that's going to create. So this E. coli, so no toxin. No toxin. Uh, and also, you're going to have dysentery. Dysentery. Dys oh, that was a fail. Dysentery symptoms. All right, not much to say about that. Uh, the big one is it'll invade. Um, unlike others which do not invade, if, if on a question, if in life you hear um, that the E. coli does invade the epithelium, you think enteroinvasive. The name says it all, easy enough. And lastly, we're saving it for E-P-E-C. This one's epic. Uh, it stands for entero. See the trend so far? Enteropathogenic E. coli. Nice. Enteropathogenic. Epic. This one's epic. So for epic, the P, you'll want to think kids. Pediatric. So think P, think pediatric, think kids. Because this one will be common in nurseries. If you say uh, you have a kid that went to a nursery out of town or in a, in a more underkept, uh, less, less maintained nursery, a non-clean nursery, this one may have EPEC coli strain. So nursery. Man, my spelling, my writing's getting worse as the video goes on. All right, so for this one, uh, remember the ETEC adhered to the epithelium. The EIEC uh, invaded the epithelium. This one, what we're going to do is we're going to attach epithelium and cause a loss of microvilli. Loss of We're going to have a loss of microvilli. Remember microvilli are the little finger-like projections that absorb stuff? So what's going to happen is our, our uh, bug is going to invade. We're going to create a little platform of these little actin filaments. We're going to create a little actin filament platform. And here's our bug. So what we're going to do is we're going to lose the microvilli. We created an actin platform. We're going to have a whole bunch of these with little actin platforms, you're going to have a loss of microvilli. You're going to have lesser uh, absorption capacity. So what we're going to have is we're going to have small intestine involvement. And what we're going to have is mucus diarrhea. Fun one, mucus diarrhea. It beats blood in your diarrhea. Um, but when you, when you think of EPEC, think of actin platform. Think of P for platform. P for pediatrics, so mucousy diarrhea. You're gonna lose your microvilli. These are just the very basics of uh, of the E. coli. We've covered the ones with toxins. So toxin, think E and T. Think no toxin with I P. So uh, the uh, I and the P do not have toxins. If you have any questions, be sure to ask. Um, this stuff is just the basics. The stuff that, you know, I've, I've covered this multiple, multiple classes. And out of, out of all the class that I've had, um, this, is, this is the highlights, the high yield stuff, the stuff that you really should know about each one. I tried to limit it to just the basics. A couple of mechanisms involved, because um, some test questions do like mechanisms. Uh, however, you know, buzzwords, this is high yield. Uh, I know I'm missing a lot, so you don't need to tell me. I, I, I'm aware that this is very, very incomplete, but it is very uh, accurate and covers the high yield stuff. So, again, if you have any questions, be sure to ask. Otherwise, thanks for listening. Uh, please click like if you enjoyed this and subscribe for more. Thank you very much.